Friends, thank you so much for being here today to be part of uh, the launch of the Australian Declaration of Recognition and Uphold and Recognise. And it falls for me to do three things. Firstly, to thank Noel Pearson for his extraordinary remarks. Secondly, to make a few brief observations about the Declaration. And thirdly, to tell you how you can all be more involved in this particular process. It's been a great honour and a privilege for Damien and I to get to know and learn from Noel Pearson over the last few years. So many Australians admire his superb oratory, his towering intellect, uh, and his ability to see new problems like this, in a new, old problems like this, in a new light. Noel Pearson has brought great political realism to this debate, particularly this debate about Indigenous recognition. The knowledge that for any reform to succeed, not only will Indigenous Australians need to support it, but constitutional conservatives as well. And this is not a new theme for Noel, this is a theme he's been talking about for over a decade. And he's right. Every constitutional referendum after 1951 that has been defeated, it has been defeated because constitutional conservatives have opposed it. On the same day that 90% of Australians voted to, to give the Commonwealth power to make laws about Indigenous people in our constitution and to count Indigenous people in the census, 60% of Australians voted against a proposal to um, remove the nexus, that's the link, between the size of the Senate and the House of Representatives. This particular proposal had bipartisan support, but a group of senators and some state premiers opposed it. Similarly, in 1977, the last time our constitution was changed, three of the four referendum questions that were put were successfully carried. But a fourth question, again was opposed by a minority of senators and a couple of state premiers and went down. For the Indigenous recognition referendum to succeed, both Indigenous Australians and constitutional conservatives must find a modus vivendi. We must work to what Noel has accurately described as a package of reforms that includes the declaration of recognition, as well as other ideas that Noel's outlined today and in his quarterly essay that is removing the outmoded and uh, racially discriminatory provisions in our constitution and the creation of some form of adequate indigenous consultative body that can protect indigenous people from the wrongs of the past. Noel, you have my commitment and Damien's commitment as well that we will work with constitutional conservatives to build a groundswell of people to support a package of reforms so we can see this issue addressed in a way that brings Australians together and addresses both the symbolic and the practical issues Indigenous Australians face. Please join me in thanking Noel Pearson in the usual manner. I wanted to say something briefly about why I particularly support Indigenous recognition and why we've come up with this declaration uh, of, uh, of recognition. Uh, I was asked this morning, you know, Julian, you've got a history of opposing constitutional reform. Uh, you were opposed to a republic, you were opposed to a bill of rights, you were opposed to the recognition of local government in the constitution. Why is this matter different? Well, I start from the perspective that the Australian constitution is a document that is broadly good. Uh, it's given us more than a century of stable government, it was designed in Australia by Australians for Australian conditions. The framers of our constitution borrowed from the best thinking around the world at the time it was, uh, it was enacted. The Australian constitution is a great democratic achievement and we should be proud of it. Those other proposals that I have opposed in the past were about changing fundamental features of our constitution, the crown, the relationship between parliament and the judiciary and the federation. In my view, they deserve to be opposed. But Indigenous recognition is different. It shouldn't represent a fundamental change to the structures or power balances in the Constitution. It should merely add uh, some additional protections. I've been interested in Indigenous recognition since 1998 when I was a delegate to the Constitutional Convention and I moved a motion at that convention calling on, indigenous calling on people to support Indigenous recognition. I support Indigenous recognition because Aboriginal people their history, their culture, their traditions are unique to this country. The Indigenous heritage of Australia should be and is the heritage of all of Australians and recognition properly confirms this fact. It places our Indigenous people at the centre of our national story and makes their heritage a source of national pride. However, 
some of the proposals that have previously been put for Indigenous recognition went too far for people like Damien and I to support because we were concerned about the unintended consequences of judicial interpretation. And they included things like inserting symbolic and historical statements in the preamble and a new section 51A that had some similar statements. Our constitution is fundamentally a legal document. The language of the constitution is ultimately subject to the interpretation of the High Court of Australia. No advocate of constitutional reform can guarantee how the judiciary will interpret its words in the future. Sometimes the interpretation, as Damien's pointed out, works out very differently from the way advocates of constitutional changes might hope. Because of those unintended consequences, we have to be very careful about adding additional words to the Constitution. Instead, what we wanted to do was to put forward a proposal on the symbolic recognition issue that would remove unintended consequences and allow for a more generous statement and allow Australians to have a role in the design and content of any statement of recognition. Essentially, and this is hard for a lawyer to say, we wanted to liberate the debate from the lawyers. We also wanted to give Australians the ability to use language unconstrained by the need to second guess the High Court. And that is what we hope the Australian Declaration of Recognition does. We hope the Declaration of Recognition will be similar to the um, American Declaration of Independence. We hope it will have a similar cultural effect in our own country to the effect that our flag and our national anthem have. And it is inspired by the way those two instruments were designed that we've come up with our process for designing the Declaration of Recognition. We've proposed that a declaration, de declaration of recognition be designed through a national competition where Australians from all walks of life can submit their version of a 300 word declara declaration to a government established committee that would shortlist five of those declarations for a vote at a national referendum. These processes, a national competition, was used in order to design the Australian flag. People as diverse as a schoolboy, an optician, a shipwright, all had a say and all had a hand in designing our flag. In terms of the national vote, that's the same way that we adopted our national anthem, Advance Australia Fair, when Australians in 1977 were given a choice uh, of a range of different options as to which should be the national anthem going forward. Any Australians under the age of 56 uh, never had a chance to vote in that referendum. And uh, this is a great opportunity for us to say something symbolic about the future of our country, the future of Indigenous population, the future and the past, uh, and to talk about the sort of society we want to be growing forward. The Declaration of Recognition, we believe, would have its greatest import in the repetition that it would have at our various points of our national life. Noel talked about the importance of the Treaty of Waitangi in New Zealand and the great cultural difference that that makes to New Zealanders as compared to anything that we have in this country. Um, we think through the rep repetition in civic, religious and particularly school assemblies and school um, environments that the Australian Declaration of Recognition wouldn't just be a document that is ignored by the people or that most people don't know about, which is sadly the, the case with our constitution, but would be imprinted very much on the hearts and minds of all Australians. And if you want to secure the future of Australia, and particularly the future of better quality Indigenous po policy making in this country, we need to, as a nation, think constantly uh, about the place of Indigenous people and see them at the centre of our national life. And we believe that the Declaration will have a role in doing that. So today we're launching the Australian Declaration of Recognition. We're also launching a new organisation called Uphold and Recognise. It reflects the fact that we believe that Australians can both uphold the Constitution and recognise Indigenous Australians. We want Uphold and Recognise to be an organisation for people who support the Constitution to join the debate about what form Indigenous recognition should take. You can find out more about the organisation sign up to the organisation's charter or find out how you can make a donation at our website www.upholdandrecognise, all one word, dot com. We want to raise money so we can start consulting with people across the country in fora like this and in community halls. We want to consult with Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians so we can build up some consensus uh, around uh, the particular elements of a recognition proposal that Noel has outlined. 
If this debate is to be successful, then we need to reach out to uh, conservative Australians, both opinion leaders uh, and ordinary people, and encourage them to engage with important questions. We need your support, your personal support, to make this organisation a truly grassroots movement, and we need your financial support to spread the word. For those people who are here today, um, you have a copy of the Charter of Uphold and Recognise in your booklets, and we'd invite you to sign up to the organisation. There's no cost, and if you're so minded, to make a donation to support our efforts. Finally, I'd like to thank the people who've made today such a success. I'd like particularly to, to say thank you to Amy Lee Curran, our excellent executive officer, to Christina Fedrigo, who uh, beautifully designed these, uh, these booklets and the banners and, and other materials behind me, uh, to Fung Van, who has been uh, our master logician uh, in producing today. I'd also like to acknowledge Kerry Jones and Professor Greg Craven, whose support has been terrific in our efforts, and also Shireen Morris, uh, who's been helping Noel with this proposal, and uh, as much as we've learnt from Noel, we have also learnt from Shireen in this process. Last but by no means least, I'd like to thank my co-author and friend of many years standing, Damien Freeman, who's kept this whole project on course and ensured that things happened today. I'm, I'm sorry I've made him labour under this particular book production, but uh, we've been friends for the best uh, part of two decades and I'm sure our friendship will continue and it's something I've always appreciated. I urge you all to consider the Australian Declaration of Recognition. This is a novel approach to this debate. Um, I urge you to get involved with Uphold and Recognise so we can consult with Australians and build the broadest possible consensus around Indigenous recognition. Thank you.